Michael Savage. Have a drink. Have an espresso. Have a macchiato. Have a bowling. Go have a bowling ball. Go play with a bowling ball. That's we okay. know, as was said last night, the patient took uh, the subway, went to a bowling alley, and went to a few other food establishments That's before okay. being admitted to Bellevue yesterday. So That's we've been able okay. to retrace those steps. Uh, our teams, teams have okay. visited each of those establishments. The JV I want to team. emphasize again, casual contact cannot lead to acquiring this disease. The only really? threat is if one has come in contact directly right. with the bodily fluids All of right. someone who has Again, this disease. the propaganda continues. Again, the propaganda. It's all we're hearing from the Democrat, Socialist, Islamist Party, USA. So let me ask you this, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Governor, Mr. President. Let's not have any more vitriol between ourselves. We're all Americans. We're all trying to control this disease. So let me ask a simple question that your genius, Frieden, and the other one in the white suit, Fauci, I love they came out in the white suits today, starched white suits to show you everything is fine. At the same time, Mr. Bowler uh, comes back, passed a new enhanced screening at JFK Airport and fell victim days later. So what does that tell you? Why don't you try to use common sense once in your life, Mr. Governor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. President? So I'll ask you this question, okay? If it's so hard to catch, how did this good doctor catch it? Let's make it real simple. Is that something that the CDC hasn't asked you yet? All the geniuses sitting around, all the new suits, ties, nice shirts from Barney's, they're sitting there, they didn't ask the basic question. So the mayor's getting up and saying, you cannot catch this by casual contact. You need direct contact with the bodily fluids. So the good doctor was there in like a biohazard suit. How did he get it? It could be he got it casually. Or worse yet, Mr. de Blasio and Mr. Obama, again, we're all Americans. Let's stop the finger pointing. Maybe you'll get to the truth if you stop trying to hide the truth. Maybe you'll arrive at the truth if you stop thinking about the objectives of the Democrat Party for 10 seconds and do your jobs to protect the American people. So let's ask this question. The good doctor from Doctors Without Borders, a good man, goes over there to help people for free. He comes back. He passes your new enhanced screening at JFK Airport. No symptoms whatsoever because you didn't close the, the uh, flights, number one. I blame you. Number two, he should have gone into quarantine for 45 days. I've told you that for three weeks, but you didn't listen to me. You listened to those morons at the CDC who are giving you the wrong information. But again, how did the good doctor get the disease if it's so hard to catch? How did it happen? He had a biohazard suit on. He cleared the government's newest enhanced screening protocols. Could it be that the advanced screening is a load of bull crap? Could it be that it can be spread casually, such as through droplets, as has been reported in the real scientific literature as opposed to the propaganda literature coming out of the Stalinist Democrat Party USA to tell you all as well? See, now we've passed the point of no return. This is no longer a matter of Republican versus Democrat. All good people listening to this show can agree to one thing, which is that they are either lying to you or they don't know what they're talking about. Now, three weeks ago, I wrote an article that was entitled, They Don't Know uh, Ebola from Shinola. It was a big hit. It was linked all over the place. Two weeks ago, I was attacked by some moron at CNN named Jack, Jack Taperwood. Taperwood had the nerve to say that I said things I didn't say. But what I said that CNN quoted correctly is that Obama is sending 5,000 troops to Liberia, one of the epicenters of this disease. And I said, is it not logical to conclude that at least one of them will come back asymptomatic? Well, Jake Tapperwood said, how dare Savage even ask the question? Savage is implying that Obama wants to give uh, Ebola to the troops. But you know what? I've been proven to be right. Now, I realize a prophet in his own times is very often reviled, and I'm, I'm lived with that for 20 years. I'm ignored not only by the left-wing press, but by the so-called conservative press, who would rather have a junkie musician on with eyeglasses, sunglasses today, than have me on with Stop the Coming Civil War. That's their choice, and that's their embarrassment. Roger Ailes will have to live with that the rest of his life. The fact of the matter is I am a prophet in my own time, and I'm trying to warn America. I'm trying to warn you that the people in charge either know something and are not telling it to you, or they're complete idiots. And that's what I think is the truth. I think they're complete idiots. That's right. They know how to manipulate. They know how to steal votes. They know how to rip off money. They know how to take money out the back door. They know how to 
they know how to do everything except run a country correctly. So I'll ask you again. I'm going to ask you once again, and let's now calm down together, me especially. Dr. Craig Spencer comes back from Guinea with the aid group Doctors Without Borders, and he successfully navigated the CDC's enhanced screening protocol at JFK Airport. And yet again, the mayor of New York, as I played, says you can't get the disease through casual contact. This is the same rhetoric that we heard during the AIDS epidemic. And I'll tell you what the problem is here, because I've said it about 15 times in the last two weeks. I've watched Frieden. I've watched Fauci. I've watched them for 30 years, 20, 30 years. The very same rhetoric and protocols that they put in place for the AIDS epidemic are being applied to the Ebola epidemic. That's the, the, that's the background from which they came. But it's a different disease. AIDS and Ebola are very different diseases. The viruses are different. The transmission route is different, and, the, and to some extent. And so to keep putting out the rhetoric that you can't get it from casual contact is true for the AIDS virus, but it's not true for the Ebola virus, as we have so sadly learned. And I'm the only one in the American media who understands this. I'm the only one in the American media who has a degree, a PhD, write it down, Doctor of Philosophy degree from the University of California, in part in the subject of epidemiology. It doesn't make me the world's leading expert on virology or Ebola or Lassa fever or any of the other hemorrhagic fevers. But I know enough to read the literature, and I also know have I also have great common sense because I am an immigrant son. And I'll tell you something about what that means. It means that the average taxi driver in Manhattan has more common sense than Mayor de Blasio. That's what it means. Now, I want to read you some of the Twitters about Dr. Craig Spencer, who went bowling and a few restaurants uh, and uh, whatever. Here's what the average person wrote. Headed home to Williamsburg, skipping tonight's bowling plan. Another one wrote, Time to start grounding flights from West Africa, you know, so people don't jump from an Ebola-stricken zone into Brooklyn bowling alleys. Uh, another one wrote, I feel sorry to doctor, New York doctor who has Ebola, but why did he think it was okay to ride public transportation, eat out, bowl at two bowling lanes? You know, that's an interesting question. In other words, the doctor didn't think he had the disease. That's obvious. On the other hand, the doctor should know he should have put himself in quarantine for at least, they say, 21 days, I would say 45 days. Any doctor who goes there should not be able to come back to an unebola zone for at least 45 days. Wait it out there, sweat it out there, uh, but don't bring it back to your home country. 45 days would be more uh, appropriate. Another one wrote this. Self-quarantine under Obama and the CDC equals go bowling all night, ride Uber and take the subway. Cheers, doctor. Another one wrote, the guy who handles bowling shoes at the NYC bowling alley that Ebola doctor played probably doesn't love his job right now. Another one wrote, how did you get Ebola? You rented some bowling shoes on Wednesday night and had a scratch on your toe? That's bad luck, man. Another one says, uh, blah, blah, blah. Have Ebola, feel free to take planes, trains, taxis, even lick a few light posts, but stay away from the bowling lanes, man. Another one wrote, a doctor who has worked with Ebola returns home to a huge city and doesn't self-quarantine. In fact, he goes bowling, eats in a restaurant, rides Uber in a subway. Are all doctors idiots? So you get the picture. In other words, Twitter users are smarter than the mayor. Twitter users seem to have a better handle on what should have been done than the head of the CDC. You know, there used to be a saying in the 70s. It was a bumper sticker that liberals like to put on their cars. And it went like this. It said, when the leaders won't lead, the people must lead the leaders. Remember that? Anyone raise your hand out in the savage audience? Some of you must have been liberals or uh, ex-liberals who are now realists and understand what's happened to the country as a result of the psychotic drug addicts, right? You remember the bumper sticker? When the leaders won't lead the people, the people must lead the leaders. Well, we're the people. And I, Michael Savage, am trying to lead the leaders. It doesn't do me any good to ridicule them. It doesn't do you any good to ridicule them. But something has to happen, and it has to happen fast. You look at the way they're fighting this war in Ebola. They're failing us at every level. In the same country, the head of the CDC would have been fired. The president probably would have been forced to resign by now. If we had any a semblance of democracy because of the bungling on Ebola, the bungling on the war on terror, and all of the other crimes he has committed, we certainly would have had a resignation by now in a, in a legitimate democracy. But we're stuck in a sort of autocracy. We know that. And now what are we going to do about this? What do you think about this doctor? What do you think about my statements? 
Who do you trust and not trust on Ebola? Do you trust Michael Savage or the CDC? Who should be in charge of our Ebola response is another question. They appointed some government hack, a lawyer who worked for Al Gore and Joe Biden, a bag man, in other words. He's the Ebola czar. Are you ready for this? The Ebola czar lawyer didn't even show up today at the emergency meeting on Ebola. He wasn't at the, at the meeting. Now, can you explain this to me? Can you explain a bigger embarrassment in your life than Obama first apex a fixer, a lawyer, as the Ebola czar, the man doesn't know an aspirin from uh, the A-train. Maybe he knows the difference between aspirin and A-train. It's not a good analogy. The man doesn't know a cyclovar from an aspirin tablet. Let's put it to you that way. The man wouldn't know the chemical formula of H2O, what it represents. I'm sure he knows what CO2 is because he worked for Al Gore pushing the big lie about the dangers 